Hi, this is Dr. Habib Ahmad and I work at the Center for Advanced Electronics and Photovoltaic Engineering at International Islamic University, Islamabad. In one of the previous videos, I showed you how to introduce a new material into the Atlas tool of Silva Kutiker. And today I'm going to show you how to introduce a user-defined material into the Athena tool of Silva Kutiker. So let me quickly direct you to the previous video where I showed you how to introduce a new material into the Atlas tool of Silva Kutiker. Yeah, here is the video. In this video, I showed you how to introduce a new material in the Atlas tool of Silva Kutiker. And later at some point, I showed you how to deposit copper oxide, which is not a built-in material, um, in uh, uh, the Atlas tool of Silva Kutiker on top of gallium nitride. Uh, today, I'm going to show you how to introduce a user-defined material into the Athena tool of Silva Kutiker. And the reason I'm doing this is uh, because uh, some of my students were facing problems in uh, making a gallium nitride based structure in Athena. So I did some working on that and the good news is that we finally found out a solution in this regard. Um, let, let me give you a slight background on this. So if we go to commands um, and then we go to uh, mesh initialize to introduce a substrate material in the Athena tool of Silva Kutiker, uh, we see in this list of materials that gallium nitride is not a built-in material in the Athena tool of Silva Kutiker. It's not a known material in the Athena tool of Silva Kutiker. So, I'm going to show you how to introduce uh, gallium nitride in the Athena tool of Silva Kutiker. So, actually the way forward is that although gallium nitride is not a known material in the Athena tool of Silva Kutiker, but gallium nitride is a known material in the Atlas tool of Silva Kutiker. So, what we can do is we can create the structure in the Athena tool and then we pass that information into the Atlas tool and uh, Athena will automatically convert the user-defined materials into known Atlas materials. And I'm going to show you how we perform uh, this uh, simulation. So in that regard, um, I've written the code, but some of my students uh, told me that this font size is really small in the deck build uh, interface. And I don't know how to increase the font size in deck build. I guess we cannot increase the font size in deck build. So I've written the code in uh, Microsoft Word as well. So we start with Go Athena, and then we define the meshing uh, from zero to one micrometer in X direction, and also from zero to one micrometer in Y direction. So like initially we are talking about a structure of uh, one micrometer by one micrometer size. And the way we introduce the meshing is we go to commands, mesh define. We insert different X coordinates over here and different Y coordinates over here. And then we click on write and it actually writes the code for the meshing uh, over here. And then, <coughs> after the meshing is defined, um, I define the donor and, and, and acceptor impurity types for gallium nitride. So we know that for gallium nitride, silicon is an N-type dopant and magnesium is a P-type dopant. So in this code, I define this as impurity I dot silicon for material is equal to gallium nitride. 
where silicon is a donor impurity. Similarly, I have defined magnesium as, a, as an acceptor impurity for gallium nitride. Then I initialize this structure in gallium nitride by this command INIT is used for initializing. We can initialize silicon substrate or any other kind of substrate by, um, by directly writing silicon over here. But for gallium nitride, which is not a known material, we have to write it in this form. Material is equal to gallium nitride. And then since we already defined silicon as an n-type dopant over here, uh, we can write C dot silicon is equal to uh, 1 into 10 to the power of 17 per centimeter cube is our um, electron concentration or n-type doping concentration. And we are talking about a two-dimensional structure. So I've already simulated this structure and let me show you this is the full form. But let me show you um, we are actually talking about so far we are actually talking about a one micrometer uh, by one micrometer structure in both X and y direction so here is let me show you the structure from uh, it's from 0 to 1 micrometer in the x direction and from 0 to 1 micrometer in the y direction and we can also display the meshing over here so you see the meshing then on top of this structure, we deposit another gallium nitride layer, uh, which has a thickness of 0 0.5 micrometers. So on top of this layer, uh, the initial structure was from 0 to 1 micrometer in the y direction. And on top of this, we deposit in this from 0 to, to 1 micrometer, it was uh, n-type gallium nitride. We can also display the doping um, in this structure. So as you can see, um, from 0 to 1 micrometer is a silicon doped gallium nitride. And then uh, from 0 to minus 0 0.5 micrometer, we introduced magnesium doped gallium nitride uh, layer. Moving on, then on top of this structure, we deposited a 0 0.1 micrometer aluminum uh, layer. So, on top of the uh, p type gallium nitride layer, we deposited a 0 0.1 micrometer aluminum layer as a contact. Then on top of the aluminum layer, we deposited a 0 0.2 micrometers thick oxide layer with a meshing spacing of 0 0.05. So zooming out the structure once again, um, we deposited a 0 0.2 micrometers oxide layer on top of it and we etched it to the right of 0 0.5 micrometers in the x direction. Let me go back to the original form of the structure. So this is the aluminum layer. Um, here we have initially we have the n-type gallium nitride layer and then we have the 0 0.5 micrometer p-type gallium nitride layer. Then we have the uh, 0 0.2 micrometers aluminum layer, in fact 0 0.1 micrometer aluminum layer. And on top of that we deposited 0 0.2 micrometers silicon dioxide layer and we etched it to the right of 0 0.5 micrometers in x direction. Uh, here is the command for etching.
uh, we etched it to the right of 0 0.5 micrometers. So, um, and then using this command struct mirror right, I mirror this entire structure to the right as well. And this is the full form of the structure. Now we are running from 0 to 2 micrometers in the x direction and from, from minus 0 0.8 to 1 micrometer in the y direction. And after that, um, I assigned the, um, the aluminum as anode. So I right click on this structure, click on display, click on this icon. And now we can see I have assigned the aluminum layer as anode inside the code. And I've assigned the back side of the structure as cathode. Once again, as you can see over here, the back side is assigned as cathode and the aluminum layer is assigned as anode. Excuse me. And then I save the, um, I uh, output the structure in Athena uh, with the name of GAN 5.str. So I was working on different iterations and GAN5 worked, so that's why I named it GAN5. Uh, then we start working in Atlas. We input the structure file from Athena, which was GAN5.str. And then uh, we introduce some models, for example, OJ. Uh, print is actually used to look at the runtime output of uh, Silva uh, over here in this window and you can extend this runtime output window as well um, then um, for me kp concentration dependent mobility field dependent mobility um, and we introduce boltzmann model as well and then i want to look at some output parameters inside the structure uh, band.tem is a really useful command for looking at the conduction energy level, valence energy level, um, electric fields, quasi Fermi levels, etc. And then I introduce uh, other output parameters as well. Conduction band, valence band, uh, charges, polarity charges, electron and hole mobilities, uh, Shockley, Red Hull recombination, radiative, OJ recombination, uh, permittivity of the semiconductor, and we can also look at the current flow lines. Uh, the current flow lines can be seen by clicking on display, um, contours, and then we go to contours. Over here, uh, we have the current flow lines. Um, initially, since this is under thermal equilibrium, so we don't have directed current flow lines from the anode to the cathode since this structure is under thermal equilibrium. But we can run the simulation, we can save the structure under forward bias once again and then we will, you will see that the current flow lines would be directed from the anode towards the cathode. So anyhow, let me close this, apply OK. Uh, then we introduce a method to solve the simulation. Uh, solve initial is used for an initial guess of the simulation. We save the uh, structure now in Atlas and we plot the structure which is uh, again 7.str. Uh, this structure over here is again 7.str under thermal equilibrium once again. Uh, so far we have not applied the biasing. Now at this point we want to apply the biasing as well. So we write solve initial for initial guess of the simulation. And then we output the log file uh, with the name of fb.log, fb.log. Uh, fb here stands for forward bias. Um, then I'm sweeping the bias for the anode from 0 to 4 volts uh, with a step of 0 0.05. And finally I plot this uh, IV curve, the anode voltage versus anode current, and then we create the uh, program. 
So let me run the simulation here in uh, Silva T card as well. So far we are running in Athena. The structure is already made. And now we are running in Atlas. The structure is plotted in Atlas. We can display the meshing. We have defined denser meshing close to the interface. Um, now the biasing is running. It's at 0 0.85, 0 0.9, 0 0.95. It's going to run up to four words. In the meantime, we can look at the structure and if we go to inside the structure, we can display um, the absolute net doping for this structure. And also, we can, we can display the anode and cathode, the electrodes. Um, we can also look at the energy band diagram by going to Tools click on tools, then click on cut line. We draw a cut line at this interface. And then we left click on this right window, click on display instead of absolute net doping. Um, the doping is 10 to the power of 18 for the p-type player and 10 to the power of 17 for the n-type player. We have defined this in the um, Athena tool in our code. Um, now I want to look at the conduction energy level, at the valence energy level, electron quasi-fermi level, and at the whole quasi-fermi level. Not the whole concentration, the whole quasi-fermi level. So here is the energy band diagram of this structure under thermal equilibrium. Um, and as you can uh, notice over here, that the band gap is running from approximately, approximately 0 to 3.4 electron volts, uh, validating that uh, this structure is actually of gallium nitride. Now, the IV characteristic of this device structure is also displayed. So I go to display, and I want to display anode current versus anode voltage. So now here is the IV characteristic of the gallium nitride based diode that we just uh, simulated. So uh, this is how we um, introduce a user defined material into Athena and then we look at the electrical characteristics of uh, that structure um, in uh, Atlas tool of Silvaco Decard. I hope this session was useful for you. It definitely is useful for my students and they would be really glad when they come to know that uh, this minor issue has been resolved. Take care and I will talk to you next time. Adios.